Aaron, thank you. All new for you this morning. Hardly a month goes by without a mass shooting or a violent attack in a public space somewhere in the U.S. In just the last three, three mass shootings have claimed at least 32 lives. First in Gilroy, California, then El Paso, then most recently in Dayton, Ohio. Investigators say that El Paso shooting was fueled by extremist views. So this morning we're looking into extremism here in western New York. We must send the message that such threats are not acceptable and they will not be tolerated. They undermine our system of law and our very democracy. Western New York's top federal prosecutor is drawing attention to threats made by a Grand Island man against two members of Congress. His name is Carlos Bayon. He was found guilty last week in federal court. Our I-Team chief investigator, Charlie Specht, is exposing threats that we face in Western New York. Horror in Jacksonville, Florida, during a video game of it. Headlines like these. The 11 victims murdered Saturday morning while attending service inside a synagogue. Have become all too familiar. Several shots have been fired. A uh, possible uh, shotgun. The U.S. Secret Service says there were 27 mass attacks in public spaces in the U.S. just last year. We can't fathom why. That person chose to do this. A jury here in Buffalo found Carlos Bayon guilty last week of threatening two members of Congress last year. Steve Scalise of Louisiana and Kathy McMorris Rogers of Washington. From his Grand Island home, prosecutors say Bayon called both elected officials and left voicemails. Read here by U.S. Attorney J.P. Kennedy. This message is for you and the people who sent you there. You are taking ours. We are taking yours. Anytime, anywhere. We know where you are. We are not going to feed them sandwiches. We are going to feed them lead. Make no mistake, you will pay. Ojo por ojo, diente por diente. That is our law, and we are the majority. Have a good day. In a court document filed by the government, Bayon later explains that he was reacting to the images of Hispanic children locked in cages last year along the southern border. He claims the images brought back memories of his own abuse when he was a child. Kudos to law enforcement for having found it, stepped in, and stopped it when they did and it didn't get to the point where maybe he became an active shooter or an assassin or some sort of physical threat. Steve McMartin is a former federal agent who teaches Homeland Security at Medai College. But scary to think how many more of these people are out there. This morning, we now know agents from the U.S. Capitol Police and the Buffalo Office of the FBI raided Bayon's apartment on Grand Island last year, finding 200 rounds of ammunition. The agents also found books about making homemade gun silencers, designing bombs, preparing explosives, and circumventing security alarms. Twice, police searched Bayon's storage unit on Niagara Falls Boulevard, or just over a month ago, they found a, quote, high-powered assault rifle and fuel to make homemade explosives. Bayon's attorney Attorney said Bayon declined to comment for this story, but the government sought to portray him as an extremist, stating in court documents that his ex-girlfriend told police he, quote, admired Timothy McVeigh for bombing the federal building in Oklahoma, sympathized with David Koresh for his anti-government views, and took an unusual interest in the Columbine mass shooting. Maybe the most likely way any of us are to come in contact with extremism is through a school shooting. That's why authorities here in Chautauqua County have developed an innovative plan to prevent those shootings. Coming up at 5 and 6, you can see more about that plan and our full story on 7 Eyewitness News at 11. For the I-Team, Charlie Speck, 7 Eyewitness News. You don't have to wait until 11 to see Charlie's story. In fact, you can read the whole thing right now on WKBW.com. We've posted it for you right on our homepage. Also, if you've downloaded our WKBW app, you just got a push alert letting you know that we've got this investigation available for you right now on our WKBW app. Just swipe left. That'll actually take you to that one page where Charlie's full story is posted. Katie.